What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and the channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money, make more money and better yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms and most importantly, build wealth. Let's get into this video. Since this channel is pretty heavy on frugal living, saving money, making smart financial decisions, I want to talk to you about delaying gratification today. It's one of the simplest things you can do but it's not exactly an easy thing to do for a lot of us. So I know a couple of videos ago, I talked a lot about delaying gratification, but I think it needs an entire video on its own because it's one of the most important things you can do when it comes to frugal living. So consider this to be a frugal living guide and we're gonna jump into this video right now. I'm about to give you three simple tips on how to delay gratification that you can simply apply and drastically improve how you save your money. So if you're someone who struggles with delaying gratification or you just want to save more money, this video is for you and you are not going to regret watching this video. Tip number one is living a minimalist lifestyle. And I'm not talking about when you open the door to your apartment or your house and there's basically nothing there. I'm not talking about having a completely clear and empty space. Like, I don't do that. You see these lights behind me. I, I'm not a minimalist in the sense of not having possessions or having very few possessions. That's that's not me, there's nothing wrong with it. I actually think it's an appealing aesthetic. I just personally don't do it. When I say live a minimalist lifestyle, what I'm talking about specifically is making minimalist financial decisions. So right now you might get paid twice a month, maybe three times a month, depending on your pay cycle. Uh, some people only get paid once a month, right? So if I'm living a minimalist financial lifestyle, is it smart for me to know that I only get paid a few times a month but I still swipe my card every single day. Just think about it. Most of us purchase things every day. But have you ever asked yourself, can I go a week without even swiping my card? Can I go a week without even paying for anything? So what you're doing is you're essentially lowering the amount of times you spend money per month, which is gonna increase the amount of money you have in your bank account. So think of all the times you've ordered something from Amazon. That's another instant where you're spending more money on more things. Think of all the times where you pass a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Chick-fil-A, and then you're like, you know what, let me turn around and go through this drive through You might not even turn around, you might just drive straight up in there, right? I, I do it sometimes. That's adding another instant where you're spending more money. Think of all the times you order something out of convenience. That's adding yet another instance. Think, I want you to think like this. Think about your cell phone. Does it work like it should work? Okay, so it probably does. You don't need an upgrade right now. I don't care that the new iPhone just came out. You don't need it. That's being minimal. You're taking the amount of cell phones that you've bought over the past few years and you're making that number minimal. I haven't bought a cell phone since, in my case, it's been 2019. But some people have gotten a new phone in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. About to get a new phone this year. That's not minimal. Same thing with your car. Some, some of us want to upgrade the cars we have, put more bells and whistles on it, you know what I'm saying? Get a newer version of it, upgrade the interior, stuff like that. But tell me how that's being a financial minimalist. Tell me how that's practicing minimalism. You want to have minimal expenses and you want to spend your money as minimally as possible. You want to be a minimalist in terms of, I'm not going to spend all this money all the time. First of all, you want to spend as few dollars as possible on the things that you don't need, especially if you're saving up for other things. Let's say you're saving for your emergency fund. Let's say you're not in the 100% greatest financial situation you can be in right now. Let's say you're not making what you want to be making right now. You have to think about what is that risk if you do get what you want and you spend that money and then something happens. You can't always think in terms of luxury like, oh, well, I want a better car right now. I want a bigger apartment. I need more space. I need better furniture. It's nothing wrong with wanting these things, but it's much better, in my opinion and in my experience, it's much better to write down the things that you want and put a price beside all of them. So then you actually understand and get real with yourself on how much this is actually going to cost you instead of just saying, I want it right now. Because when you write those things down, when you pass McDonald's, Burger King, or Chick-fil-A, you're going to say, you know what? I don't need that right now. I'm, I'm saving up for this. This is what I'm, I'm saving up for a new couch. Now you're minimizing the amount of times you would have spent money over the course of a month. Because whereas you might've went to McDonald's seven times, you might've only went twice. And where you would end up going to the mall and tell yourself that you're not gonna buy anything, you start to realize, you know what? I know my own nature. You know what I'm saying? If I go to the mall, I'm gonna buy something. I'm gonna see something. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it on my own, but my body's just gonna move me over there and I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy those pair of shoes. I, I just know I am. 
now you have yet another pair of shoes. And I told y'all a few videos ago, I, one, one day I got some shoes, super nice. I don't remember the last time I wore them. I, I literally don't, it was probably a few years ago that I wore those shoes. These right here, these right here. You know why? Don't nothing go with them. So yeah, you wanna have, you wanna be a minimalist in terms of, I have a few transactions this month. And those few transactions I had weren't a lot of money. I set financial goals for myself. I wanna have this much in my savings before I even think about buying something else. And a lot of the, a lot of us don't realize if we just minimize the amount of expenses we have over the course of a month, we can put away a lot more money. Like even if you max out the amount of money you think you can save, try living minimalist for one month. Say when I go grocery shopping, I'm gonna get only what I put on this list. Say when I drive past the fast food restaurant, I'm not gonna go there. Tell yourself that I'm not even gonna tempt myself to buy anything that I don't need. And a lot of us fall into the trap of buying things just because they're on sale. I don't care if it's on sale, I don't need it right now. And that is the kicker right there. My uncle used to always tell me this and I never forgot it. He always used to say, hey, if I don't have it right now, I don't need it. When the PlayStation 5 came out, me and my friend were talking and we were both like, man, I'm, I'm getting that PlayStation 5, I don't care. But when it came out, it sold out pretty much instantly. And the only way you could get it was paying way over the price that it was actually worth. I was like, oh no, mm -mm, nope, not doing it. To this day, I still don't have a PlayStation 5 because I realize I don't need it. I'm delaying my gratification to have a PlayStation 4. We, we good over here. I don't even play video games like that. What am I going to, what do I need a PlayStation 5 for? And so when you think about it that way, you end up living a minimalist lifestyle in that way. Maybe I'm just making my own definition of what minimalism means to me, but I just want to share with you, that's, that's my philosophy around minimalism. When it comes to minimalism, I don't think you necessarily need to have an empty, clear space where there's only a few items here and there. It looks pretty cool, especially on YouTube when you see those videos, but like when it comes to me coming to my place every day to live, like I like to have stuff hanging up on the wall. I like stuff like these lights behind me. I got these lights in my room too. Y'all can't see it, but in my office I have all these things, these, uh, these Funko Pop things, you know what I'm talking about? So I don't think you necessarily need to be like that, but just have a minimalist mindset when it comes to spending your money, especially on things that you don't need. You need to think about the future and how it's gonna impact your future by just delaying your gratification just a little bit longer. And I'll tell you this, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you is one of the most slept on things that you'll ever hear. You gotta be grateful for what you already have. Like I told you a second ago, my uncle always said, hey, if I don't have it right now, I don't need it. You don't need a PlayStation 5. Ladies watching, you don't need that makeup from Ulta that you've been eyeing for the last few months. You don't need those Yeezys, you don't need those Jordans, you don't need any of that. But it's okay to want things you don't need. What I'm saying is you don't need to buy them right now. You don't have them right now, you don't need them. Talk about what you have right now. Are you grateful for what you have right now? Because most of us right now are in very fortunate positions. We got roofs over our heads, we got food to eat, we have air conditioning, we have beds to sleep in, clothes to wear, couches to sit on, and TVs to watch, jobs to go to. We're making money. So even if you just have the bare minimum, be thankful for what you already have. I want you to do this. When you wake up every day, because this is actually going to help you save some money, so I know this is going to sound maybe corny or whatever. I really don't care. It's going to help you out. When you wake up every day, think about five things that you're grateful for having. Five things. It's going to put you in a way more positive mood. You'll move a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? You'll walk with your chest out a little bit because it's a confidence booster. Because once you acknowledge what you have around you, you're not really thinking about anything else. And it'll give you that much more patience as you save up for what you really want. And I'll go right now. I'm thankful for my bed. I'm thankful for my camera. I'm thankful for my George Foreman grill. I'm thankful for my couch. I'm thankful for my TV. And I'll tell you this right now. I want a better grill. Right now, I'm saving up for a better grill. But I'm delaying my gratification. And you know what? The George Foreman is doing what it's supposed to do. It's cooking my food quick and healthily. It's taking all the grease and putting in that little grease catcher thing. And that might sound simple and you might have even laughed a little bit. But the bottom line is this. What you have right now is doing what it's supposed to do. You got shoes right now, they might not be in the 100% best condition, but guess what? You have shoes on your feet, it's better than nothing. We really have to understand that the things that we want and the things that we complain about every day are really just first world problems. And if you want something, here's how you delay your gratification. If you want something, make sure you can buy at least two or three of them without your bank account filling it without completely wiping your bank account away. See if you can buy two or three of them. If, if, I want, if I want a brand new set of AirPods like these right here, right? 
I got to make sure I can buy two or three of them without my bank account even seeing an impact before I do it. That's, that's my rule that I have for myself. Because if I can't do that, that means I'm not where I should be financially yet. If my savings aren't at a certain point and I'm over here buying something that costs $300, then where are my priorities at? What, what is really important to me? And the reason I bring up the AirPods, I actually have a really interesting story about that. So some of you might remember, if you've been watching me for a while, uh, last year I came out with a video about having zero dollar AirPods. I got AirPods for free. It was like the second generation version of AirPods, right? I actually did get those for free and I had been wanting them for a while and I was gonna buy some, but for some reason I was like, you know what? My bank account, it was looking good, but it wasn't where I wanted it to be. And I didn't feel that it was necessary or responsible to buy AirPods right then. So I just didn't, right? Well, at work, we have this point system where if you do a good job and people award you points, you actually, it's like credit card points where they actually give you points that go towards your name and they have monetary value. So I hadn't even looked at my points for like a whole year. And when I looked, I was like, oh, I have enough points to get myself those AirPods. So I used those points and bought myself AirPods, didn't pay a dime for them. Well... As my fate would have it, about a year into having them, I messed around and lost one of them. I was at work one day and they fell out of my pocket because I didn't have the case. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and one of the AirPods fell under one of these vending machines. It went deep under there. So I don't know where it went today. I still don't know where it went. I, I looked and I looked. I could not find them. I was like, I'm going to just cut my losses because I didn't pay nothing for them anyway. And so now I was like, dang, I want me some more AirPods. But I delayed my gratification again. And would you believe I got these? These right here. These are like, uh, I don't know if you can see that. These are the third generation AirPods. More expensive than the second generation. Way better sounding. Way cooler. I got those for free. And it wasn't from the point system. Literally for a Christmas gift. My, my company gave all of us on the leadership team free AirPods. It was so dope. So I'm not telling you you should expect that, but what I'm saying is when you delay your gratification and you do the right thing, some things are going to naturally fall into place. Whether falling into place is you having the money that you need to actually buy that then without seeing an impact in your bank account, or if that's somebody saying, hey, we appreciate having you. Here's some free AirPods because I was definitely about to go out and buy some. So that's all I'm saying. But as I was waiting on buying some, I didn't just go buy some right then. I was like, you know what? Even though I'm upset that I lost one of my AirPods, <laughs> I'm grateful for the one that I still have. So I, I went to the gym. I had one AirPod in. I, I didn't care either. I did not care. Again, another silly example, but it's true. Like all that stuff I just said really did happen. But on a serious note, we really do have to start thinking of this in terms of first world problems. Instead of thinking of your car as a junky piece of crap, like think of it like, man, this takes me from point A to point B. It hasn't broken down. It may not have Bluetooth, but it has air conditioning. The previous owner of this car may have smoked so much that the inside still smells like cigarettes, but you know what? I can put an air freshener in there. It may not be completely decked out and shiny and good looking, but it's taken me to a place where I can make more money and one day upgrade my car when I'm ready to. Maybe it's a couple of years from now, but I know I'll get there. And, I, and for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have a vehicle that gets me to where I need to go to make more money so I can continue living the quality of life I'm living right now. We got to start telling ourselves stuff like that. Because in a sense, when we feel like we need something so much that we need it right now, we go over, we rush over to the dealership, take my money. Now you got a car note. That's another expense. Then, you know, it's the end of the year. Your rent's about to go up. And you're over here complaining about how rent's high. Well, if you didn't have that car note, you wouldn't be worrying about it, now would you? I just, all I'm asking, think about the future. Ladies, that purse you want, I'm sorry, but you don't need it. You already got purses, use those. Be grateful for what you got. The apartments you have, you got, you got a roof over your head. You're not concerned about your life when you go in and out of your place. You're good, you're secure, you got AC, you got a shower, you got running water, you got a place to sleep. May not be ideal, but be grateful for it. Because there's some people out here on the street and that's real. Here's a tip right here that I think everyone needs to realize. Instant gratification teaches you nothing. Think about everything you want right now. I'm not even talking about just physical items, but I'll include them in there though. Let's say you want 
a 70 inch TV for the living room. Let's say you want a promotion at work. Let's say you want to win the lottery and just have a million dollars fall in your lap right now. Let's say you want that attractive girl you've been seeing at the gym every now and then to become your girlfriend. And then let's say I just snapped my finger and all of it was yours. You've learned nothing. You didn't put the work in to get that promotion at work. You didn't do nothing for that a million dollars. You didn't go talk to that girl at the gym. All you did was wish upon a star, someone snapped their fingers, and then it was all yours. So what I'm saying is when you delay your gratification, you understand there's a process to getting everything. When you get a promotion at work, you got to improve yourself. You have to build your network. You have to understand how the business runs. You have to understand how to add more value to your workplace. you got to prove yourself that you have people skills, analytical skills, and everything else. You want that 70-inch TV for your living room, you got to put the work in to actually be able to afford it a few times over before you actually buy it so your bank account isn't sitting there looking sick. You have to put in work consistently and make money consistently and keep money consistently before you're able to even afford these types of things. For most people, when they make their first million dollars, it's because they've worked for several years and put the time in. Or maybe they learned new skills. If it just falls in your lap and you didn't delay your gratification, it just instantly happens, your dopamine is going to be all messed up. You're going to actually think you did something and you didn't. So now what do you think is going to happen? You won't appreciate anything. And all of the, everything I just said earlier about being grateful, how are you going to be grateful about something that just gets handed to you all the time? Instant gratification just doesn't give you anything. Like if you, if you came to me and told me, yeah, I want a new Mercedes and it would just randomly be handed to you out of nowhere. You didn't delay it. Nothing was delayed. There was no process. There was no growth. There was no learning. There was no nothing. It was just, I want this. Oh, here you go. And then you become a grown spoiled kid who doesn't really deserve what you have, and you expect everything to be handed, handed to you. That's not good. That was kind of a subtopic, but I just really wanted to touch on that because I don't think people really understand. Like, It's easy to get impatient and say, I want this right now. But if you had it right now, you would never appreciate it. You would never become the person who is deserving of what you want because you didn't put the work in. So anyways, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but the last thing I want to say is this. Think about the outcome. When you're delaying your gratification, I want you to think about the outcome. Think about how being frugal, thinking about how sacrificing a few nights out, a few times going out to eat. Think about how that outcome can positively impact your future. Because I don't think anyone really thinks about that because it's easy to go on a diet until it's not. It's easy to just be eating chicken and rice every day with water on the side like I used to do until it's not. Until it gets bland. Until the little seasonings you're putting up there ain't, ain't cutting it. Until you want some, some different types of food. Next thing you know, you're eating cakes and brownies and burgers and fries and all this other stuff. So it's easy to save your money for a day, a couple of days, maybe a week. But a whole month, you start getting a little itch. You forget about the process. You forget about why you wanted to do it in the first place. Then you fall backwards. Not realizing the whole purpose of you doing this was so you could stop living paycheck to paycheck. Without realizing the whole purpose of doing this because you wanted to save more money to buy that house you've been wanting. Not realizing you wanted to put some extra money away so you could be investing every month. And make, and make your money work for you in your sleep. You forgot all that went out the window when you felt that first itch. And it goes deeper than money too. Like I was saying, it's easy to diet until it's not. Well, you're trying to get a six pack abs. And you're over here drinking Coca-Cola and eating burgers. That ain't going to get you no abs. When you're in the gym doing crunches and you feel your abs burning, you, you want it to stop right now. So you stop. You get your instant gratification. You stop. The pain is gone. But you've learned nothing. And you've gained nothing because you still don't got abs. You might be at work and you might have a hard day. You might have a really hard day. It might be physically straining, mentally straining on you. You'll be like, you know what? I want this to stop right now. So you just walk out. You just walk out. You're like, you know what? I'm calling off. I'll be back tomorrow. You've learned nothing, you've gained nothing. All you've done was reassured yourself that it's okay to walk out and come back the next day. Not realizing your pay just got cut because you're hourly and you need to physically be there to make money. So with anything in life, whether it's relationships, money, food, whatever the case is, there has to be a process that gets you from point A to point B. And if you just skip that process, you get nothing. You have to think about the outcome. You have to think about, you know what? I'm eating healthy. I'm eating good so I can have more energy. When I have more energy, I'm more cognizant of what's going on. When I have more energy, I'm in the gym more often. I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I'm able to put up more weight. 
My abs are coming in now. I got I to gotta keep this going. Yeah, the food is a little bland, but whatever. I'm, I'm good. I hate the taste of water now. I've been drinking nothing but water for the past three months. It's paying off. I'm hydrated. I'm feeling good. Doctor says I'm healthy. Last year, I almost quit my job because I was getting tired of the environment. I felt like no one was noticing the hard work I was doing. But, you know, I just stayed the course. I kept going. I done got promoted. You want to be able to say stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about? You want to be able to say stuff like, you know, I started saving money last year. And it got a little painful because I couldn't spend money on what I usually spend money on. I had to cut back a little bit. But I kept going. Thought I would have been lucky to save my first $1,000 by the end of the year. Now it's the beginning of this year and I already got up to $3,500. You want to be able to say stuff like that. It makes you feel good. It makes you realize that you've worked hard to get to where you're at. And if you can do that, even through that pain, even through those roadblocks, you, you, you know you can do anything. You can do anything. Delay your gratification in more ways than just money. In more ways than just not buying that thing you want. Not buying those shoes. Delay your gratification by not cussing out your boss. Delay your gratification by not stopping when you're doing your crunches at the gym. Stop when it's time to stop. Stop when that timer goes off. Delay your gratification by saying, hey, look, I'm holding off on the fast food. I'm trying to get my body right. Those are the three tips. Those are the three things that I want you to think about when you actually delay your gratification. Hope you found this video helpful and actually a lot of the stuff I talked about in this video weren't necessarily directly correlated with money but these are the things that you need to live a frugal lifestyle and get the things in life that you want and actually better yourself every single day while also building your wealth. So leave me comments down below let me know what you think tell me how you're delaying your gratification right now tell me what goals you're trying to reach and I'll put mine down there too. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.